tonight. There is a bylaw that prohibits uh, swimming in the river. With the sweltering temperatures, people hit the open water. We show you how to keep safe while staying cool. My kids like coming here. Regina residents speak out on the plans for the future of the Central Library. And it's music festival season, and we catch up with Saskatoon's Jazz Fest and Country Thunder in Craven. This is CBC Saskatchewan News. It's Wednesday, July 10th, and welcome to the CBC Saskatchewan News. Hello there, I'm Dan Plaster. The toasty temperatures have many people looking for ways to beat the heat. And for many, that's going for a swim. But as Pratush Dayal reports, some experts are urging caution before hitting the water. When the mercury is climbing, what better way to beat the heat than to cool down in some fresh water? When I get nice and toasty, I like to cool off and take a little dip in the river. Just, just don't be dumb about it, you know what I mean? You can just easily get cooled down in the water by just sitting in it. But experts say people need to be cautious. In less than a week, three people have died in provincial waterways. A 61-year-old man was located dead after his idling boat was found in Peter Pond Lake. A paddle boarder also went missing and was later found dead in Lake Diefenbaker. And a teenage canoeist died when his boat flipped in Helene Lake. Every year we run about uh, 80 or so water rescues a year. And in Saskatoon, swimming in the river is not only unsafe, it's not allowed. There is a bylaw that prohibits uh, swimming in the river. Make sure you understand the current of the river, where it's going. The river bottom does change over time, so be aware around that. Like there's a nice uh, sandbar out there right now and that sandbar could be gone in a day or two. So just be really careful when you're out in the river. She's got two very large props on the back end uh, and we just want water going through that. Operators of the Prairie Lily say they've also had some close calls with people in the river. We're in a channel. We don't have a lot of places we can go. We can't turn and we can't stop. So um, we just ask people stay away from us. Back at the beach, others are taking safety in their own hands. <laughs> Emily Palmer and her friends say there's never really a need to go far out in the river. And I like the idea of always being with a buddy. You should always have a buddy there in case something is happening. Cause then, you know, they're there to call for help. Life jackets, floaties. I've got a little floaty thing there with me to take. Um, and just kind of knowing your limit of what you feel comfortable with. Dylan Larson says even though he's an avid swimmer, he still stays close to the beach. There is current, so... Um, you got to know the depth too. It can drop off pretty quick in the river system, so just got to be careful. Know where you're going. Stay safe. Pratish Deal, CBC News, Saskatoon. The Saskatoon SPCA says the heat is a big concern for pets too, especially since dogs like to be outside. Instead, you might want to give them an indoor activity, like teaching them a new trick or give them a frozen treat inside of their favorite toy. But of course, the number one rule is don't leave your dog in a vehicle in this heat. Even if it's only 20 degrees outside, that temperature in the car will rise so quickly. It doesn't matter if the windows are rolled down. Um, it doesn't matter if you're parked in the shade. The temperature in the car will become dangerous very, very quickly. So if you're running errands around town and you want to bring your dog with you and you can't take your dog to all of the places you need to go, just leave them at home. They will be way more comfortable there and it's just the safer thing to do. Amidian also says heat stroke can come on quickly and be fatal in dogs. Symptoms include excessive drooling and panting, dizziness and sluggishness. Other tips include shorter walks on grass instead of pavement and making sure your dog has plenty of fresh, cool water. The Saskatchewan Health Authority's payroll system is still not working properly and many nurses are not happy about it. The software is called Administrative Information Management System, or AIMS. It's meant to be used for payroll, scheduling, and more. The system was rolled out two years ago, but swiftly taken down because of issues. It was reintroduced last week. The nurses union says it immediately received a wave of complaints from members. It takes a huge amount of time to actually be able to figure out if you've been paid properly. And, you know, when we're in a nursing shortage, 
why would we put up barriers when a registered nurse now, where are they supposed to have time to figure out their pay? In 2023, the province's auditor projected the payroll system would cost about $240 million in all. The CBC reached out to a company involved in the creation of the software and to the Saskatchewan Health Authority. None have responded so far. First Nations leaders from Saskatchewan were in Montreal this week to ask the Assembly of First Nations for support. They want the federal government to pay for natural gas infrastructure in their communities. More than 20 First Nations communities do not have natural gas in their homes. Many rely on electric heat or propane, which of course can be costly. We all know electricity is very expensive. And, and to heat your home uh, when it's minus 25, minus 30, your power bill is, is, is significant. Uh, we have some elders who live on a uh, fixed income who, who are on uh, electrical heat. Uh, and that would eat up half their their uh, pension check. We actually just uh, signed a, a memorandum of understanding here uh, a month or so, a couple months ago, with um, First Nations Power Authority, and that's exactly try to do it. As Minister is indicating, a lot of people would think that reserves in southern Saskatchewan are all gasified, and they're not. About half of the 400 homes on Beardy's Okamasis have natural gas. Retrofitting the other 200 homes would cost an estimated $4.5 million. Sask Energy says they've been working with First Nations to come up with a plan to deal with the issue. Regina is getting a new central library, eventually. City Council approved the library's debt financing plan. That includes an annual library mill rate increase for five years, about 92 cents more every month. Council still has to decide whether to renovate the central library, relocate it, or build a new one. We asked a few people what they think. My kids like coming here, so both my kids went to school like around here, so they both come here for school and stuff, right? And I don't know, it's just I just like the location, I guess. It's been here since I was a little kid. You like the library where it is, Aaliyah? Yeah. Yeah? Of all the services to uh, be paying for, I think this is very, very much something that I would uh, appreciate contributing to, unlike, um, you know, sports events or anything, something a bit more superfluous. I would be heartbroken if it closed, so I'm a huge fan. And I, 92 cents, take my 92 cents happily. I think it should stay, and I don't think they need to spend oodles and oodles and oodles of money, like they said at one point, rip it down and rebuild. I think that's stupid, because who's going to pay for it? You know what? Saskatoon already turned over sod for theirs. So, we're behind. Libraries are important so people can become better readers and learn more. Regina Police want to be more involved in the community. And thanks to a new monthly initiative, they will be. The RPS says it's an attempt to engage with local residents. Every month, police will target a different community to patrol. Regina's new police chief says he's heard concerns about a lack of police presence in some areas. And he hopes this is a new plan that will address that. So today we try to, you know, free up our calendars. You know, it took a while and difficult to free up our calendars. So, so you know, we can't do it every day for all of us because our roles are, are, are difficult. Try to free up our calendars so one day that we can get as many cops, you know, including others out on patrol to try to reassure the public and to, to gather some more partnerships to ensure that we can do things better moving forward. RPS says it will collect feedback to see how people are reacting to the new plan, then make adjustments as needed. A pair of Saskatoon doctors just spent six months volunteering in Southern Africa, and it included one very unusual house call. Jason Warwick has more on their adventure. Doctors Malie Brindamore and Ryan Miley are glad to be home back in their familiar routines, but they're also grateful for their recent experience. Miley and Brindamore took their two kids along for the six-month trip to the Southern African nation of Lesotho. The two doctors volunteered to join a team working with tuberculosis patients. We had a moment in our lives where we were uh, ready to go for more adventures and learn more, uh, and we wanted to do something as a family, but also continue to contribute. 
And then while talking about this and thinking about this, we also realized that we wanted to learn more to bring back here. Miley says he learned to improvise in difficult conditions. So we drove into the mountains to meet them because they were coming 40 kilometers by horse through the mountains to get to their appointment. So we ended up doing the clinic visit on the side of a mountain with the patient still on horseback uh, and just figured that was the best way to reach him where he was. Lesotho has the world's highest rates of tuberculosis. Miley hopes their trip helped make an impact on the people there. Tuberculosis is persisting in northern Saskatchewan for many of those same reasons. Poverty, overcrowded housing and inadequate nutritional food. Miley and Brendan Moore say that they learned a lot in Lesotho that can help patients here. For example, in Lesotho, there's a program to supply TB patients with an assistant to help them take their medicine. Patients are also given food baskets if needed. TB is a disease of poverty, of injustice, uh, people who have been forgotten by the world. Um, and that is fixable, but it's not fixable just with, with doctors and nurses and, and, and drugs. Um, but the lesson we learned there, we hope to bring back here and try to apply uh, to the programs that we wor are working uh, with here. Because even though uh, the challenges uh, come from different routes, they're still quite similar. Brenda Moore and Miley say the only thing that will bring long-term success, whether it's in Africa or here in Saskatchewan, is to improve social and economic conditions. Jason Warwick, CBC News, Saskatoon. Everyone finds their own way to beat these hot temperatures and local splash pads seem to be one of the more popular and I am that kid right there. I don't like getting wet. For me, you know what? You may want to find a splash pad sometime this weekend. Stay cool. Tyreek Reed will be back after the break to tell us how long these hot temperatures will be here. Stick around. A major archaeological dig is underway in northern Saskatchewan. Researchers are searching near Prince Albert at a site where dozens of prehistoric tools have already been located, some dating back to more than 9,000 years ago. As Alexander Silberman tells us, archaeologists hope to prove Indigenous people lived in the region earlier than current historical evidence. In the boreal forests of northern Saskatchewan, archaeologists believe this riverbend is covered in clues about its earliest residents, indigenous people arriving after the Ice Age some 10,000 years ago. Now researchers from the University of Calgary and the University of Saskatchewan are gathering samples of soil, seeds and pollen to learn how they lived. Yeah, so we can get a sense of how they changed their relationship with the landscape over thousands of years. Those clues include these dark lines, or paleosols, ancient soils preserved under sediment. There's also markings with charcoal, signs of a possible hearth. This is a piece of flake or debitage that's left over from stone tool making. This local historian found dozens of cultural objects here including a bison bone tool estimated to be more than 9,200 years old. He brought the site to the attention of the archaeologists. I would really like to nail down um, the oldest point of occupation. The researchers are working closely with nearby First Nations and Métis communities to combine their findings with traditional cultural knowledge. When we say we lived at the buffalo thousands and thousands of years, well, this site will prove that. Willie Ermine, an elder from Sturgeon Lake First Nation, came to lead a pipe ceremony before the start of the search. He says he hopes to learn more about how his ancestors lived. Crossing Asohunan is the Cree word for this area, and it was a crossing for the buffalo to the south is the Great Prairie. The researchers tell us this site is one of the oldest and best preserved on the western prairies. Along with another nearby site, it's the earliest evidence we have of post-glacial human occupation in this part of Saskatchewan. They hope it will reveal exactly when people began living here more than 9,000 years ago. Alexander Silberman, CBC News, near Prince Albert, Saskatchewan. The weather update is brought to you by Capital Ford Lincoln, proud partner of the Saskatchewan Rough Riders.
Tariq reads in with the weather. Now, Tariq, you've kind of had an easy job this week because it's the one trick pony. Just uh, hot. Exactly. It's, it's just hot. And, you know, it seems like it's only getting hotter. Every day it seems like there's more and more color on this map. Today, a vast majority of Saskatchewan underneath a heat warning. No surprise here. We've really been feeling that these past few days across most of Western Canada. And obviously, in northern Saskatchewan today, we're tracking that precipitation moving through the north, and that's bringing some thunderstorm activities. This yellow area right here is some severe thunderstorm warnings issued by Environment Canada. So we're really feeling everything right now. But of course, the main topic, like always, the heat. Now let's take a look at current temperatures right now. Seeing temperatures in the upper 20s and even 30s in a lot of areas as we head down south. We're sitting at around 30 degrees right now in Regina and most of south and central Saskatchewan. But it's the humidity that we want to focus on because with that Humidex, it's feeling more like 40 in a lot of areas. And that's going to stick with us as we head into tomorrow. Tomorrow's actually going to be one of our hottest days down south. So we're going to want to prepare for that. Now we talked about this precipitation moving through the north. That's going to continue through the overnight. And tomorrow we're also going to see pockets of precipitation down south. And that's going to bring some thunderstorms along with it, along with that heat, of course. So we're going to want to keep an eye out for that. And heading into Friday morning, we're going to see another push from the west make its way east through the Churchill region and parts of central Saskatchewan. And that'll continue into Friday as well. So we're going to be dealing with the heat. And of course, we're going to be dealing with the rain as well. Now, when we're talking about all these thunderstorms. We're looking at moderate conditions in southern Saskatchewan and also in parts of central and the Churchill region. That's going to bring strong winds, heavy rain, and even hail to some areas. And obviously that wind is going to start to pick back up as we head further and further into the day tomorrow. We're looking at gusts at around 50 kilometers an hour in southern Saskatchewan and also to the north. And that'll stick around with us as we head into Friday as well. Now let's take a look at our seven day forecast here. Like I said before, Thursday being one of the hottest days of the week, if not the hottest day of the week here in Regina, seeing a daytime high of around 34 degrees, feeling like 40. And on Friday, we're also going to be in the 30s with that humidex feeling like 40 as well. Those showers coming back in on Saturday. The week ahead looking closer to seasonal, but we're still going to be feeling that heat with temperatures in the upper 20s. In Saskatoon as well, feeling that heat tomorrow with the humidex feeling like 40 degrees. You're going to want to keep that water bottle on you and stay hydrated on Friday. Those showers moving back in. But once again in Saskatoon, those temperatures getting closer and closer to seasonal, but still feeling that heat, Dan. So are you a lake guy or a pool guy to stay cool? I'm a stay home guy. Yeah, me too. I don't like getting wet. Exactly. All right. We'll see you later. Later. One of the driest places on Earth is exploding with colorful blooms. The Atucama Desert in northern Chile is usually the desolate place on Earth, but the early arrival of winter rains in the southern hemisphere has the rocky dunes erupting with purple and white flowers. The so-called flowering desert occurs every few years, usually in conjunction with the weather phenomenon known as El Nino. More rain is in the forecast and that's expected to enhance the blooms. We'll be back with more after the break. Festival season is here and the Saskatchewan Jazz Fest is gearing up for a big weekend. Ticketed concerts started today and there's also plenty of free programming all under already underway. And one local musician says this time of year is so great for Saskatoon. I would describe it uh, one word, jubilant. Everyone's <laughs> jubilant. They're in a jubilant mood. Uh, they're in a pleasant mood. And uh, it's just a beautiful thing. You can walk really anywhere in the city. And at the right time, you can hear music just, you know, traveling block to block. Yeah. And that's what I love about it. Uh, the music is everywhere during Jazz Fest. It's so well thought out that way. Karpinka played his set earlier this week at Jazz Fest. This year, most of the bigger acts will be playing at Victoria Park with the other free concerts, which are happening here as well as around the city, including Riversdale, the Broadway Theatre, and the Alt and the James Hotels. 
The neighborhood pop-up concert series also goes until the 13th. And country music fans are getting something a little different this year for the Country Thunder Music Festival. Canadian rockers Nickelback are headlining the show on Saturday nights. And for anyone who says Nickelback doesn't fit the bill, you should consider this. Some artists bring country. They, they're going to bring the thunder. I think they're going to bring a huge party on Saturday night. Did you want to come and see all the good folks that showed up tonight? Light them up! Rock and country are not that different. They are just Alberta boys who grew up in the prairies and, you know, they've got some songs, if you really listen to them, they have that country twang almost mm -hmm. in the lyrics. So, you know, good music is good music. Tyreek's back and uh, familiar with Nickelback? Oh, uh, you know, I want to say I am, but that wouldn't be honest. Just give me a few days, Dan, and I will know all of their music. I'll be the biggest fan ever. I am old enough to have seen him as Village Idiot. Okay. Yeah, in Lethbridge, Lethbridge Community College, Barn, 1995. Okay, you got to teach me a few things. Do your math from there. Nice. Now, show me some math with the weather. Okay. <laughs> now tonight we're seeing lows in the 20s here in Regina. This is close to what daytime high should be for this time of the year, so we're still going to be feeling that heat across across the region and across the province. Waking up tomorrow morning, of course, still feeling that heat. And as we head into tomorrow afternoon, that's when we'll see highs in the 30s for Regina. And of course, as we mentioned earlier, with that humidex, it's going to feel like 40. So it's gonna be a very hot day tomorrow in Southern Saskatchewan. In Saskatoon as well, still seeing lows in the 20s tonight. Heading into tomorrow morning, we're also going to be feeling that heat. The sun will be out and as we head further into into the afternoon, we're going to see those daytime highs get closer to 40 with that Humidex, Dan. Thanks, Ty, and keep cool. You too. It's a summer tradition in Warman. The Warman Fire and Rescue had its annual slip and slide day. It's yet another way to get some summer relief and a chance for the department to get to know the community. <laughs> Anytime we get a streak where it's going to be plus 30 or more, then we pull out the water slide and invite uh, a few hundred of our uh, of the kids of the neighborhood and the city out to, to join us. So I'm probably just gonna like just slide down the belly first. I like spinning when I go down, and then you get to the bottom and you're soaking wet. I'm going down and reaching the bottom with all the puddles. Yeah, it definitely cools you off. The secret is uh, every three or four minutes, put a little bit of dish soap down and. Uh, it keeps the it keeps our water slides a little bit lubricated. Actually, if you guys all line up, our uh, 30 firefighters of Warm and Fire Rescue. This is what we're all about. So, we uh, do medical calls, we attend fires, and and do all the regular stuff that you'd expect. But being involved with our community and helping out and doing things for you know for our community and especially for the youth because you know you got to start recruiting young. So. If you get them into the uh, firefighters are good, then uh, my job's a lot easier in about 10 more years and they beat down the door to join. So We generally get uh, families camping in the park here or having their little lunch and sending their kids down the uh, water slides and making a day of it. So yeah, it's a lot of fun. What a great little tradition. And that's it for us tonight. Of course, for news, head anytime to cbc.ca slash sask or slash Saskatoon. And of course, the CBC Saskatchewan YouTube channel. That's all we have for you tonight. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you at six again tomorrow.